Um, in this video clip, I'm going to show you how to calibrate three-point bow gauges. Uh, in particular, the linearity of this, uh, these instruments. They are uh, internal bow gauge measuring instruments, but they have a range. So that range has to be calibrated against known masters. In this case, I'm going to demonstrate, first of all, how to calibrate using ring gauges, which is the classic way of doing this. Um, most people uh, have some rings, they, uh, they will calibrate them, but unfortunately there is never enough rings to do the calibration of these uh, instruments. In this case, I'm going to use, use two rings to demonstrate the, the process. Uh, the rings have already been calibrated, and what I have done in this case is I found the difference from the, the bottom ring to the top ring, which is 9.997. Now I'm going to uh, show you how to take readings from this micrometer. This is an instrument that Sangam Metrology manufactures. There are many types of different bow gauges. This one is accurate with a pistol uh, grip type of action. There are micrometer types, there are lever types, there are loads of different types of micrometers. So in this case, it's, it, this has a range of 10 millimeters, it's 50 to 60 millimeters. As I've said previously, I've got two, I'm going to calibrate this between two rings. You need many more rings in the middle, but at the moment, we're just as a demonstration, we will just simply do this. Okay. I'm going to up, uh, pull the lever, so the end will retract. And so if you get the ring gauge, small ring gauge, I will then just zero this here, which is a zero, because we know the difference between the two rings, which is 9.997, okay? Now I go to the second ring. If the linearity of this instrument is correct, then I should be somewhere very close to the 9.997. In this case, it's 996. So that's just uh, one micron, which is very good. Okay, that's the ring gauge method. But we also have another system, and it is this uh, calibration unit. This has a number of advantages over ring gauges. One is uh, that um, with the ring gauge, you're always limited as to how many readings you can take, because that is subject to what ring gauges you have. Um, this unit has no limit. If you want five, if you want to take a reading at every millimeter, you can do that. You don't normally do that, but that, that's a, a practical um, um, thing about this particular calibrator. Okay, I will demonstrate to you how we calibrate the same micrometer on a true card system. One, two, three, okay, first of all, uh, just a uh, way of introduction about the calibrator. It consists of a, a base unit, two side members which are set at 20, uh, 60 degrees and the method of setting them is very very important. That is where you get your calibration uh, traceability from. And that is set with a, a, a triangle which is uh, calibrated from a well uh, known laboratory in this case which is Opus in, uh, in UK. It's a UCA certified certificate for the size of this uh, triangle. This is very important. Um, so we uh, basically use this triangle and set of four match slip locks, which we can put on there. And these, uh, these blocks, you can move them slightly so uh, you make sure that when you move these, these line up with this uh, triangle block and the, all the slip blocks are uh, in, in, in touch with the, um, uh, with the triangle block. Okay, I'm going to remove the blocks now. You need four matched blocks. The, the, these are 20 millimeters. You don't have to have 20, uh, 20 millimeters. You can have any size uh, of uh, mat, but they must be matched. Uh, uh, set. Okay, we're now going to calibrate this 50 to 60 head. To do that, we have a, a sliding uh, envelope, which is basically, th this produces a, a, a variable ring gauge, 
with the ins inscribed circle. Uh, the accuracy of these uh, blocks is critical once we actually establish that they're okay. Now we can go ahead and calibrate the, the micrometer. To calibrate this, I use a 20 millimeter slip block to begin with. I put the slip block in front of the uh, moving anvil. I then bring this forward. Okay. I basically set this up to somewhere near zero. Okay. I, I just keep on moving the trigger, take the load off the, uh, the anvil. I'm going to uh, zero this instrument in with the um, with the three points: two point on the uh, side blocks and one point on the twenty millimeter slip block. So I will actually just get reversal on there. I look for the smallest reading. This is plus. Zero this. I move this. That's. Minus, so I have to now find the, the plus side. Still zero. Still see minus. So that's that's good enough. That's now set. Okay. Okay, the next step is uh, to go uh, and check this instrument at 60 millimeter uh, position. We do this by simply changing the size of the slip block. If I reduce this to 5 mm, that is I, um, reduce, I, I reduce by 15 mm, that will give me 10 mm exactly. Because this calibrator works on 1.5 principle. The movement of the slip block or the, the, uh, the sliding block has to be divided by 1.5. That's the only uh, factor that you need to remember. Okay. So I'm now going to put a 5mm slip block in here. This now will give me inscribed circle of 60mm exactly. Okay, I'm now going to take a reading in the to, uh, simulator reading for the 60mm block. I simply do that in the, once again the same thing. I look for a reversal. Reversal is a fairly standard uh, way of um, uh, people working in the laboratory looking for minus smallest size or the largest size. In this case, um, it's showing 10.001, which is um, it, it correlates uh, more or less exactly with the ring gauges, and that I think is pretty good. Okay, that's uh, uh, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, the uh, linearity of, with the rings it showed one micron. And with the true color, it's also showing one micron. The other thing I just want to uh, mention at this stage is that we have a, a Sangam Trolley has produced a catalog. This has lots of information for uh, manufacturing companies. Uh, but one of the things in this case, what we're talking about is a calibrator, true color. So we have a picture there, various other information here. And also, we have a very extensive uh, set of inf information on, on the instructions on how to use it. Calibration using uh, slip gauge method and calibrate, calibration using uh, uh, transducer method, which is basically, you can instead of slip gauges, you can use a linear transducer with a readout. Uh, and that, that is a very quick way of calibrating these instruments. Okay. That's it. Thank you very much.